Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're taking a look at Swarm Rune. This is a deck I've thrown together that really interested me. I'd messed around with it a bit in my story videos if you'd seen it, but I have refined it down a little bit since then to something that I like a little bit more. So this deck predominantly swarms the board basically. So you're looking at low cost followers that deal lots of stuff or things that just purely summon out really strong and repetitively. So of course I'm using a basic spell boost engine for the most part because they're the most probably power hungry cards and I really wanted to try and incorporate a lot of new things into this. So because we did lose the one drop spell that gives us our earth sigils, I thought why not give just two beast faced mage, although I haven't actually got to use these yet in a game because I just haven't had the chance to. They are quite good, I think, if we can pull off at least one of those as set up for either a Golem Assault or a Grand Summoning or the Consecration. Either Any three of those really can benefit from this beast, so running two, I think, is completely fine. Of course, the rest are pretty standard cards, so your three of each Insight and Knowledge and three Magical Owls, Magic Missiles and Conjure Golems, all your standard engine. Of course, the triple Golem Assault because you want to be able to swarm, so Golem Assault's great for both single wards and swarming wards. Then we've got the probably crux of our damage output, which is bad. Bad is great for this. I mean, she can just buff our board repeatedly, which is great. So I really enjoy using that as our finisher. Then, of course, Sun and Moon. I really enjoyed this card, of course. It's great. I think two of is just right for this deck. I think one wouldn't quite be enough, and two would probably be t sorry three would probably be too much so two is a nice number to have for this deck of course it synergizes with spell boost and is infinitely recyclable provided they don't get banished which is fairly uncommon then we have absolute zero blade which i'm a little iffy on still i like this card it's not quite as strong as wind blast although it also isn't a damaging card it's a destruction card which means it does avoid things like roland for example that's just one that i can think of where you would be limited to how much damage you can deal because this instantly kills so i don't know i really just like the ability to have a draw effect if i have an evolved follower which i don't use often but it's nice to have the option of using it then I've got Moonshade Mage, which I usually use as a answer this or die mechanic. So basically, this is reasonably cheap at 4. It's a 1-4, and it spell boosts to add 1 attack. So not as good as the Silver Drop that we'd had previously, although it does have a stronger base health, which works in our favor a little bit, that we can take advantage of. I like it just because I can abuse it basically. I can play this out as say a 11-4, I'll probably end up removing this eventually but at, for the moment using it as an 11-4 can be really crazy. We can take advantage of it, they have to remove it, basically that's what I use it for. Then the card that I haven't got to use too much of either, mainly because I just haven't been lucky enough to draw it, is Destiny Bard. I mean she's pretty great, the spells that she gives are both pretty solid. Being able to either use Prophecy of Doom if I know I'm going into a longer game, or to take advantage of Prophecy of Boons if I'm going into an earlier game is always quite nice. Of course, the Grand Summoning I mentioned, just our Swarm card. Probably the biggest Swarm card of the deck though is Snowman King, both an offensive and defensive card, which I love. It has beautiful Evolve Art, and I mean, you can't go wrong when you've got offense and defense in a single card. And then of course the Chimeras, because you're running a spell boost engine, you may as well run Chimeras, that's what they're good for. And I'm running a single Unbodied Witch, because I feel like I want at least one of these in the deck in case I get stuck in a situation where I've got just one or two cards, and I really need to be able to use it. Of course, I haven't got to use it much because I am only running a single one of it, but from the current testing, it seems to be okay. So we'll get into a couple of matches and check out this deck. Okay, so first up we have Haven as our opponent. Haven has been moving towards Lions a lot, a although Summit can Ooh, pop up. I find that Lions isn't too hard to beat with most decks, which is a little disappointing. I think once Lion can be refined down a bit, it'll be a lot nicer. I've got one that I want to test out myself that I've been working on, but hasn't quite got there yet. And I think with maybe one or two more adjustments or a day or so, I could probably bring it into a more competitive and reliable standpoint but at the moment 
unless you get really lucky, lions aren't that hard to beat. But I think this is a good test case for this deck in particular. It was one of the earlier matches I got to play with it. And Golem Assault did quite well with blocking out some of the early game that Haven can have. And now they've lost a lot of their good removal. It's not too hard to counter as long as you watch out for things like Gene. But probably the hardest card to beat. So they go pretty wide with this, which worries me a little bit, which is why I'm glad I went with the Conjure Golem, because it does force them to at least hopefully waste the Snow White. The aim was to have the Snow White removed as easily as possible. Which I think I made the right decision, although they do get the Gemstone Carapace play. But Zero Blade should hopefully be boosted enough to really take that out by that. So I could easily set up another ward here, I mean, it double spell boost, which is good. Getting these snowmen buffed as well, you don't need hardly any buff on snowmen, which I think is great. So even from a very minimalistic hand, it's very easy to flood the board with them. Although I think I might try and work a way to put a Chimera finisher into this deck instead of maybe one of these other cards. Definitely could do some refinement, of course. These are very early decks, so they're going to be fairly unrefined. But my opponent so far has done reasonably well to set up against me like this. Of course, my Magic Missile is great. And I get a really nice way to use this Chimera. Answering their board effectively and setting up a possible threat. And we're very close to using our snowmen, which is kind of my biggest turns. I really love using those snowmen as huge swings. So there's their own sun and moon. It's very sorry, moon and sun. A very popular card still. Especially when taking advantage of healing. I'm probably going to work on a healing haven deck for unlimited and for for normal as well, because I've got the cards to build that as well. Like I said in my previous video, Haven, Portal, and Rune, and Blood, I think, are what I have the most cards for at the moment, so those four classes will be kind of my main focus, although I am probably going to look at Reanimate again. The only card I'm missing there is Sedwin, which is unfortunate, so hopefully I can get a few of those. Of course we get an okay trade. Peacekeeper, sorry, Peace Weaver, the wrong card. Peace Weaver, probably the best lion support card, I think. I actually really enjoy the lion cards, and I think they're great. The only real problem with them is the fact that you don't really get to do much on the turn to play them, especially Someday, when you're playing the them at five. Piece. So until you actually get storms, there's no good ranges. value to them. Yes, your majesty. So I decided to go full ward board this time. I think it was a good move. Oh so I can just set it up. And if they remove a couple, I could easily throw down these two 4-drops, if I want to, and that could really that mess them up. Honestly, I think setting up that those 4-drops would have been the way to go, even though I didn't go that direction. So, Mysterious Knowledge for the draw doesn't really get me anywhere. Absolute Zero Blade, good removal. Go for a trade. I mean, I favoured the trades here over anything else, and setting up just a single move Shade Mage. I think was good enough. I mean, a 9-4 that has to be removed at least forces them to be focusing on I those two things. You to glory. If they can't remove it immediately, that 9 damage to the face workout. would really hurt. So, 9 to the face it is. And I have a really great chance to swarm the board now, while also backing up this 9-1. So the only thing that would really counter this now would be to play a second beacon, which I would then follow up with the snowman to completely block off, so it would be a little disappointing on their part. Though, another, a dark gene is just as good, does remove my entire board. It definitely forces me to think of a way around this. Chimera though, being able to remove at least one of these is super nice. And we can start setting up some more things that are forced to be removed, like another Moonshade Mage. That's why I like Moonshade Mage. Like I said in the start of this video, 
forcing removal is good. If I can force them to trade into the 8-4 with either a spell or a big follower, it means they aren't going to be able to focus on removing other things later on. Which is always good. So they did get healing, which was a little annoying, so did decide to go with the snowman play to block off yes, the 4-4 from being immediately killed. What in the at the same time getting rid of the 3 is at least removing potential damage. Although I am at risk of lions now becoming a problem. But they do go for double double of this new amulet. Draw a card and then last word to a destroy a random follower. Pretty much now. a worse tribunal honestly. I really don't like it as much. If it was destroy a random follower and then draw a card, I could see it being more balanced, but in that case, the cost would then be too cheap, so really Faith awkward. Finds the bread. Fortunately for me though, I have perfect lethal here, or actually pretty decent lethal in general. Which is why I love bad or bad or however. You know, someone told me I pronounced this before and completely slipped my mind, but we'll just call it bad for short. It makes it easier. It's a really nice game. So following on from that matchup, we have Forest. Again, I've really enjoyed this deck so far, and I think with some further refinement, it's got a lot of potential. Of if I could come up with a decent way to buff my snowmen a little better, it could definitely do well. I have been thinking maybe I should try running the blade, because snowman storm blade could be quite good. But probably not enough. So, opponent doesn't really do too much. I mean, basically gives me free reign to keep getting cards and buffing. Draw power is one thing in this deck that I didn't want to fail. I need as much draw as I can get, so I always have resources. Especially since we're not running Daria stuff anymore, where you can just dump a whole hand out and get it all back. Re infinite resources is very important. Darkness on this so, Moon and Sun getting a Tsukiyomi out early is good. Even though I did dis just forget that they immediately counter it with that amulet, so a little bit of a misplay there. But it did at least let me play out something, so no! I was reasonably okay with it. It also helped me curve, which is nice. So we do get our knowledge play and get to remove this, while also doing a nice little bit of buffing. I'm basically buying time at this point until I can get my snowman out. Once you reach your snowman turn, as long as you've got a couple other cards to support that in the following turns, you're usually okay. But they're going for the full Wood of Brambles play, which honestly isn't that bad for me. So, Magic Owl plus a good Evo will always work out nice. We will get our Snowmen, You're which are well for. past their buff now, but mainly focusing on the Chimera. Getting a cheap Chimera is very important. And we've also set up the potential to play a Ward, which against Forest will be a huge advantage. So it looks like they're going all in on these fairies and buffs. So I do want to build a buff forest, I'm just not sure where I want to start yet. Because some of the new cards are very interesting. So you do go for 4 to my face. Which at this stage in the game wasn't a big worry. I can pretty comfortably play a couple of wards and use my Chimera to remove at least 2 cards which will set up for my snowman turn, which can be immediately followed by a second snowman turn if I need it. Or just go for the, the Sun and Moon Tsukiyomi play. I think in a forest matchup, Tsukiyomi can be better, although Madarasu can immediately counter fairies, so it's a little interesting on which path you want to take with that card. But having that versatility is extremely important, and being able to play it for 7 and get a buff can be really, really good behind these snowman. the elf song presenting itself. They do a good job at removing everything here while setting up a 2-2, but it does cost them a lot of removal. Which, when you're coming up against snowmen next turn, isn't what you want. So 
So we do get to drop our snowman, being able to winters. get a bunch of storms, which immediately answer this 2-2, and get a couple of damage to the face. It was a different strategy than going for the wards. Usually if I'm on the back foot, wards are great, but if I know I can go for the assault, that's when you want to go for storm damage. Especially against something like Forest, where they're only really relying on a bunch of small drops. The one threes really become hard to deal with. Well, they get super lucky with that insect. Not as lucky to kill the 2-3, but lucky enough to get rid of the 1-3 instead of one of the 1-1s. So I can remove this entire board, which I think is the ideal play. If I can remove it all and refill it again, I'll be very happy. So instant flood of more damage. Fly is being answered immediately again. So this deck I try and rely on them having answers every turn, which I think is the best way to go at the moment. And obviously I have a couple of alternate win cons in the sense that I'm running the cheaper rune legendary and I'm also running unwi the witch, so both are good. So this is the time when going for Sissiomi is super good, especially when I can use absolute zero blade straight after. So four damage to the face plus the potential to ping one damage off Sissiomi is always good. I'm going to see Fashionista, so we're going to see the dress plays. A black dress to knock them out. <laughs> so definitely setting something up. The king ends up hitting so the exact sorry. thing they just dropped, which is kind of unfortunate for them. And our Chimera is a perfect answer to their board. Watch. I'll get over this. And using this to ping one damage might not have been the wisest choice, honestly. I should have just sent it all face. I mean, it would have been an immediate six damage, and then they wouldn't have been able to trade into my Sikiomi at all. Or just trade at one of the cheaper drops, but... Nah, yeah, hindsight's 2020. Probably only slightly off what I should have done. To the depths of the abyss. It would have made this turn a lot nicer. And not have to rely on anything else. But no matter what, I would have been able to answer this board immediately, which would have been great. But the top deck really just secures me the game, so no real issue at all with this match. I mean, they were pretty much always on the back burner. Every single play they made was to answer me. Exactly where I wanted to be Good in this match in particular. Wins. And where you want something like a swarm deck to go. So I hope you guys did enjoy this deck. I have a lot of fun with it and I hope you guys can too. Obviously you will find the deck list to this deck in the description below along with any other important links related to Shadowverse or myself or the Shadow Nexus which I do recommend you check out. So make sure to hit the like button and subscribe and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.